hello good morning everybody uh, balu here from sp tech once again uh, based upon the comments uh, received from youtube uh, actually i am starting a new video series from today and uh, this video series is going to be on academic project work now academic project work is a course of study in the final semester of graduation in bangalore university and also uh, it is there in all universities of india so this uh, video series would focus on uh, primarily on how to do a project work in a methodical way and uh, it is very important as for us to know uh, what is the importance of doing the project work number one project work uh, has to be done because it is going to improve your overall skill sets because in project you are actually going to implement what you have learned and uh, one more important advantage of uh, doing a project work is it is also going to improve your soft skills because uh, in project work you are going to learn certain soft skills like uh, communication skills your team building skills your leadership skills etc and uh, the other main important advantage of doing a project work is it's going to get you a job because the moment you do a project work and if you can showcase the project work to the interviewers at the time of the interview and if you have really done the project on your own it's going to get you a job because it's going to impress the interviewers there so these are some of the main advantages of uh, doing the project work and today i'm going to deal with the first session and the session is titled as uh, how to execute projects so let me uh, take you through the session objectives now there are two things which i am going to cover today the first important uh, thing what i am going to cover is what is a project first we all need to understand what is a project and we shall focus on characteristics of a project so now what is a project the uh, definition is very simple a project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product service or a result see any project is a temporary endeavor now what is temporary we all know that temporary means we are going to do a project in a limited time frame and what is an endeavor endeavor is nothing but a small assignment so every project will have a definite start date and a definite end date and within the start date and end date you have to complete a small assignment and what is the output of a project the output of a project is to create a unique product service or a result now output of a project can either be a product it can either be a service or it could either be a result so let me give you some uh, examples here for example let's say that uh, you know tata motors in india came out with a project called nano cars so that project was initiated for what to basically create a nano car and nano car was a product or similarly a mobile company or uh, an mobile manufacturer company or a mobile service provider let's take a mobile service provider company they come out with a project to set up an call center for customer satisfaction customer relationship management so setting up a call center is a service similarly uh, university of bangalore comes out with a project to uh, find out what is the satisfaction level of all the students studying in bangalore university so the output of that project is a result so when you actually execute that particular project the output is a result which will have the statistical analysis of what is the satisfaction level of all the students studying in bangalore university so that means output of a project can either be a product or it could be a service or it could be a result now when you are actually doing a projects in bca or mca since it is uh, technology oriented uh, projects so the output of the project could generally be a product and bbm management students could I, i do a project where the output of a project could be a result so it depends upon which stream you are actually doing the project now there is a, there are some characteristics of a project now as you can see from this particular slide here i can actually abbreviate this project for example p in a project stands for problem r stands for resource o stands for objective j stands for justification e stands for empowerment c stands for commitment and t stands for training so we call them as the characteristics of the project where each and every portion of a project has got definite meaning to it so first we shall see what is the problem in a project see first thing you need to all understand is 
if there is no problem there are no projects every projects will begin with a problem now who gives you the problem the customer gives you a problem and when the customer gives a problem to you you basically execute that particular project to overcome the problem or to arrive at a solution to that particular problem and the solution could either be in the form of a product service or a result now let me give you one simple example let's say that uh, government of karnataka or any state government as such they come to you and they give you a problem and you are a construction company owner they come and give to you a problem and say that look there is a traffic congestion from this part of the city to this part of the city or there is a traffic congestion from so let's say bangalore you have a traffic congestion from silk board to electronic city so how do you overcome that particular problem you need to execute a project of constructing a flyover or you need to set up a project called as a metro rail so that means when you actually set up a project called a metro rail and successfully complete it then what happens is the output of a project will be a service where you would have arrived at a solution to that particular problem so every problem every problem is initiated to a project by a customer and the output of that particular project could either be a product or it could be a service or it could be in terms of a result so every project will have input as well as output now the most important thing in a project is definition of a problem now that's very important a people fail in defining the problem here look what albert einstein says if you can't explain it simply you don't understand it well enough now what does this mean you don't begin the project unless and until you have a clear concise idea of the problem and most of the projects fail because they don't understand the problem so it's very important for us to have a clear understanding of the problem if the problem is not well understood then the solution what you get is not what is actually required by the customer so it is very important for us to put lot of focus to put lot of understanding into the problem and make sure that you understand the problem very well and see there is a small notification what I have given below 90% of the projects fail due to misunderstanding of the problem so the problem is not understood properly the projects are going to fail so you need to understand the problem very well now understanding the problem itself is of great importance in seeing the success of the particular project now how do you understand the problem see every project will have a project team now what is a team as swami vivekananda said team is a group of people with many hands and one mind together we stand divided we fall so if a project is being executed by a team all team members must sit together and discuss the problem and brainstorm the problem now when you are doing a project you will have to create a team maybe in colleges what they basically do is every project is allocated one one team and the team members would be constituting around two or three members depending upon the college management so all three members should sit and decide the problem and all three members should come at a common understanding of the problem if different if all the team members have got different opinion on the problem now it goes back to that old uh, story which you have already uh, heard before during your childhood days you know all blind people six blind people explaining what an elephant is so when you actually when blind people start explaining the elephant each person would have a different interpretation on the elephant so that should not happen so every team member should have a common understanding of the problem and all the team members should come on a same page where they understand the problem well and they should define the problem in a concise way now once the problem is defined then they go into the other various stages of your project now we are now we understood what is p in a project p in a project stands for problem and problem is a starting point of any project so you have to define the problem and this definition of the problem is called a synopsis we shall talk about uh, synopsis in the later part of my session but first thing you need to understand is before you actually start your project please be clear about your problem i'm stressing that fact again and again you have to be extremely clear about your problem then comes the resources so what are resources see if you want to convert problem into solution you need resources 
For example, if I say that I propose a solution called, you know, building a flyover to ease out the problem of a traffic congestion, what I need to do, I need to have resources to build the flyover. I need infrastructure, I need people, I need time, I need money, I need clearances, I need architectural design. So these are called as resources and resources could be either living resources or non-living resources. For example, you have time. So time is a non-living resource. You have money, money is a non-living resource. You have people, people are living resources. You have technology, technology is a non-living resource. So you need multiple resources to basically come out with a solution. Now, if you are doing a software project, you need resources. For example, you are building a web application to basically solve a problem. So what kind of resources you need? You need an programming language. You need a database management system. You need an internet service provider. Or if you are hosting your web application, you need a web server. So these are all the resources what you basically need to solve a particular problem. So it is very important for us to identify the right kind of resources to the problem what we are going to tackle. So we understood two characteristics of the project now. One is problem. The second one is resources. So resources depend upon the problem what you are tackling. So in the next video series, I'm going to talk about more characteristics of the project and see what are the other things which are very vital, which are very vital in the formulation of the project. Thank you for watching this uh, video lecture. I'll be seeing soon, seeing you soon in my next video series. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.